Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's ICU, and this morning, Apple seeded iOS 10.1 Beta 3 to registered developers. And in today's video, we're going to go over everything you need to know related to iOS 10.1, including the features and changes in the latest beta, as well as how to install it and even touch on jailbreaking. So if you're only interested in a certain segment, check down below in the description. There's a table of contents that has timestamps to everything. All right, and before we actually get into it, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up because I am actually giving away another iPhone. 7. That's right, if you happen to miss my last iPhone 7 giveaway, it's not too late. You can still enter to win. Check out details in your cards right now, as well as down below in the description. All right, so now let's talk about iOS 10.1 Beta 3. First of all, opening up Safari here to Apple's developer portal. You will notice that we have iOS 10.1 Beta 3, and right beneath the build number, it states that it was posted on today's date, October 10th, 2016. Now, after having this latest beta firmware for over two hours, no one's really able to pick up the changes in this latest seed. And that actually means a few things when talking about the changes of iOS 10.1 Beta 3. First of all, though, we need to understand why iOS 10.1 is even a big deal. Now that's for the iPhone 7 Plus's dual camera setup to provide that portrait camera mode. iOS 10.1 merges the hardware as well as the software to create a really cool depth of field effect. Here's a quick example of that between an image without the depth of field effect on and an image with it turned on. You can see up there in the left hand corner there is a badge, so a pretty stark difference between the two. Essentially what it does is it uses the wide angle as well as the telephoto lens to take a picture two pictures simultaneously, and then it creates a nine layer depth map between the two images, and it's able to determine what the subject is to create a portrait, hence the term portrait camera mode, meaning the subject is in focus and everything else in the background is out of focus at varying levels of focus too. So that's pretty cool. It's not just static in the sense that anything in the background is 100% blurred, not at all. You can see here the leaves of this flower are less blurred when they're actually closer to the foreground, and when we look at the background, is totally blurred out. So a really awesome effect, and that's really the main change that iOS 10.1 brings to the table, aside from bug fixes, which is really going to be key here with iOS 10.1 Beta 3. As I mentioned, no one is able to determine any sort of outward-facing changes that end users will end up noticing in this third beta. That's because Apple is solely focused on bug fixes and improvements behind the scenes with this firmware. Because I know personally, myself, I've noticed several bugs since iOS 10's release, of course, dating all the way back to iOS 10.0.1 GM edition. And even after launch with iOS 10.0.2, the latest public firmware right now. And if we look back to the first beta of iOS 10.1, it was spaced two weeks between the second beta, which of course was released last week. Now we have beta three less than one week from beta two's release, which means that Apple is definitely speeding up the beta life cycle of iOS 10.1. And you might be wondering, well, why are they doing that? And this also ties into the possible release date of iOS 10.1, that's because they want to push it out to the public as soon as possible, because there are two major reasons. Number one, remember the main feature that I told you guys about in iOS 10.1, the thing that uses the dual camera? Yeah, Apple wants to ensure that that actually is available for individuals thinking about purchasing an iPhone 7 Plus, because that's one of the key selling points to upgrade from a smaller sized iPhone 7 to an iPhone 7 Plus. That's what they're actually going to focus on in the retail stores to distinguish the two. It makes perfect sense. The camera is the big upgrade beyond just the fact that it is a bigger phone. So they want to get that out as soon as possible because of course that was demoed during the iPhone 7 unveiling and of course 7 Plus in this case. So they want that out to the public so that way they can actually make use of that feature. And number two, Apple AirPods. See, those are launching at the end of this month, and the primary reason why they weren't released alongside the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus is simply because the software wasn't ready. See, the hardware is already in place, already set to go, everything works fine from that standpoint. But when we're talking about software, it's going to be deeply entwined with iOS, and Apple probably wanted the additional time to make sure that everything works perfectly. Because although we have seen early reviews of individuals actually testing the Apple AirPods, and therefore their features 
features are presumably already integrated into iOS 10, the version of iOS 10 that we all have to date. That doesn't mean that it is perfect. Apple wants to ensure that it is, or at least as close to as possible before they actually push out the product. Again, hence the reason for iOS 10.1 and Apple wanting to speed up beta releases because they have to get it out before Apple AirPods drop or at least close to the release. So from here on out, unless we receive another minor iOS 10.0.x update that just improves AirPod connectivity features, iOS 10.1 could be available to the public again as early as the end of this month. And that also ties into jailbreaking, guys. See, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Everything is starting to fit together when we actually examine the pieces to the puzzle here. Because as I've mentioned in my past jailbreak update videos, Pangu is most likely waiting for iOS 10.1 to be available to the public before they release a new jailbreak. They do this every year, and this is going to be the third major firmware that they've actually jailbroken. Broken. The first of which was iOS 8, followed by iOS 9, and hopefully again iOS 10. And the reason why they're going to wait for 10.1 is because it makes sense. It adds such a massive feature to the iPhone 7 Plus, and chances are good it will probably be required for Apple AirPods. So they want to ensure their work doesn't go to waste, and so long as it does work on iOS 10 beta, because believe it or not, they are working on a jailbreak behind the scenes, just like they do every single time, then they are going to wait until that firmware is available before they actually issue a jailbreak guys. It's common sense. They want to ensure that it lasts for as long as possible, and they also want to make sure that Apple doesn't have added opportunity to simply patch the jailbreak, because if they were to release something right now, even though it could theoretically work on iOS 10.0.x, it's not the best move, because then Apple actually has a few weeks to prepare iOS 10.1 to patch the jailbreak. So long as the beta doesn't coincidentally patch anything that they're working on, they're going to save it, guys. And if you want additional information on jailbreak, Breaking, then definitely check out my playlist. I have linked down below in your descriptions as well as on your screens now via the cards because the information in all of those videos is of the utmost importance. And again, I go more into depth there and touch on other subjects as well. But for a general ETA or release of a new jailbreak, again, we are still expecting one toward the end of this month or the beginning of next. It all really does depend on iOS 10.1's release though. As I've said a number of times throughout my videos, the jailbreak situation is always dynamic, not static, meaning that it can change and shift, mostly depending on what Apple ends up doing. Okay, so now how do you actually install iOS 10.1 for those of you who are interested? It's very, very simple, either via one of two methods. Now, since the developer beta is the only one that's out right now and the public beta is going to come out tomorrow, if you wanna get on it, then you definitely can. It's just a little bit more work, though because it is more work, I recommend just waiting for the public beta release again, which is probably going to take place tomorrow. But if you want the developer beta right now, then down below in the description, there will actually be a link to a post on my site that does contain a method for you to actually search for the beta install profile. Once you get that and once you obtain it, in install it onto your device. You'll just have to agree to Apple's terms and then it will prompt you to restart your device. Do that. Once it comes back up, unlock it. And then of course, launch settings, go to general and then software update. And you will see an available update for iOS 10. 0.1 beta 3. For the public beta version, it's even easier. Just go to beta.apple.com inside of mobile Safari. Once you do that, you're going to log in using your exact same Apple ID that you obtain things through the app store with, and then go to beta.apple.com forward slash profile and log in again. If it asks you to actually agree to the terms there, you're just going to do that. It might kick you back, in which case you're going to have to re-navigate to beta.apple.com forward slash profile, sign in if it doesn't already pick up your account, and then just install the profile, reboot, settings, general, software update, and you should see an available update for iOS 10.1 beta 3. All right, guys, now that pretty much wraps up this video. I really hope it helped you. There will also be a downgrade tutorial down below in the description that goes over how to downgrade iOS 10 beta back to iOS 9. So it's a little bit of an older video, though the exact same steps still apply if you want to downgrade from iOS 10.1 back to 10.0.2. Again, that concludes everything I wanted to talk about. If you did like this video and it helped you out, be sure to drop it a like. And down below in the comment section, let me know if you come across any bugs inside of iOS 10.1. I'd be really curious to hear your experience if you are on the latest beta firmware. And if you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos covering various topics, including jailbreaking, new iPhones, and Apple products, just be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU. 
signing out. Join the iCracker Advice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.